you have two things. You either have time or money. If you have a bunch of money, you can run ads, bring people to you, get them to say, hey, I, I, I want this, this thing you're talking about, I want it. Or you don't have any money, you just have time. You knock on a bunch of doors, you slide in the DMs, you send a bunch of emails, hit up people on LinkedIn, you identify who your audience is and you go to them and you start a conversation. So there is an element of building trust, making talking head videos, creating content that speaks to their pain points. What's the dream outcome that they want? What are the things they're dealing with right now? You want it to make it so they read and view your page and be like, wow, they know me. This is the only four things you really need to be focused on. Content, conversations, calls, and clients. So getting clear on that is really, really important. <laughs> All right, we got Evan Price here, CEO of Artist Collective and creative of the Artistpreneur Accelerator. Check his Instagram. He's constantly traveling the world and he helps creators basically make a full time and online, constantly traveling the world. Evan, where are you at right now? Uh, I am currently in Marrakesh, Morocco. We travel in a couple other places throughout this year. But yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, let's just dive into it. What's the secret? What's the trick? If I am a creative person, how do I package it into a business? And this is the question that everyone want, wants to know. How can I turn my passion into a business? This is the fucking million dollar question. It's absolutely. Yeah, I wish there was like one secret key ingredient, but it, it, honestly, it's like what I like to start creatives with is like, what are you already doing? What are you already pretty okay at that you can just package it a little bit better? You know, our first main method I call the DLD offer model, which is just stands for do less better. Many creatives are just like doing a lot of different things, right? They're they're selling, they're doing they're doing marketing, they're playing a bunch of gigs, they're doing artwork on the side, and it's stealing their energy and like dispersing it everywhere instead of just being like, I'm going to be a great closer, for instance, or I'm just going to be great at teaching piano, or I'm going to be the best gigging guitarist. So finding that niche, if you want to say, and like sticking with it and putting all of your energy into a few baskets is really where I like to bring them because they're just, we're distracted. We're creatives. We're distracted all the time. So that's really the, the main key, I would say, is focus and usually it's at the intersection of what you're already doing and good at and um what can make a decent amount of money which is you know i'd, I'd argue most things not necessarily everything but there's an intersection there that, that you can really find success in gotcha what's the next step how do i package it up <clears throat> yeah so really you can want to go to high ticket uh, high, high ticket is the king here especially if you are just starting out a lot of people want to go straight to like building a course or straight to just selling a low ticket product and unless you already have like a gigantic following or you're gary vaynerchuk already it's going to be hard to sell a lower product to the masses in my opinion at least with, with creatives so sticking with high ticket and, and having to close less people people for a lot more money is a lot easier, to be honest. So I always go towards high tickets. So let's take a guitar instructor, for example, right? The typical gu guitar instructor is going to say, I'm going to charge 30 to $50 an hour and get a bunch of people who just want to like do it as a hobby and like try it out. Well, they're going to have to work with like hundreds of people a month to make ends meet. They're going to have to work with a lot of lazy people who are really committed. <clears throat> there's a lot of, there's a lot of drawback there. Instead, you could work with five people and charge a thousand to two thousand to three thousand dollars for like maybe an eight week program and <clears throat> work with better people who are committed, make more money and be less stressed. Gives you the freedom to travel, gives you the freedom to kind of do whatever. And you can do all this remotely like what we're doing right now. So that's kind of the next step there is increase the price. And that's what usually makes people a little bit more uncomfortable because they're like, what? I used to sell it for $40. I can't sell it for $1,500, but it's actually easier to sell. <laughs> and you're, you being a closer yourself, like you can maybe uh, um, tag onto that too. But in my opinion, it's a lot easier to sell somebody with that mentality who's like committed already than somebody who's just wanting to try it out for $40. They're usually your worst clients too. <laughs> so yeah, that's the next step I would say. Gotcha. Okay, so this is kind of the, the model. High ticket, less people, obviously very familiar with it. Um, having my own high ticket program on how to be a high ticket closer. 
uh, right now. But but I've I've also had courses in the past, and I I still have. I have an Upwork course. I have like a digital nomad beginners course. But I guess you could say a mid ticket, like five hundred dollar. Yeah. Go, what's the next step for your framework? Okay, let's go high ticket. This thing I want to teach. Uh, what's the next step to get it going? Yeah, within that three step framework, the, the third one is going to be market the transformation. A lot of people want to focus on the features, the things they'll get. I'll give you a 12 week course. I'll give you all these modules. You'll have a bunch of homework. Nobody buys anything from that. You want to, and this is, we're talking like of my clientele is like probably never sold anything high ticket before in their lives. Maybe never even sold anything in their lives at all outside of like referrals. So this is a big like mindset shift, but it's like you want to market and sell the, the dream vacation, the dream outcome, right? Cool. Back to the guitarist example. You're not selling guitar lessons. You're selling their ability to feel confident on the stage in front of a thousand people. That's what you're selling. So being able to tap into that is kind of the, the third piece of this, this DLB offer model. It's like being able to identify what it is that their your clientele is feeling. What's that deep pain? What, what are they humiliated about? What are they feeling regret? Or, you know, what do they really want at the end of the day? That's what you're selling. And that's what makes it a lot easier. Nobody wants just to do work. They want the end result. So getting clear on that is really, really important. For sure. So, all right, I'm clear on my uh, dream outcome. What's next? Um, so you're clear on the dream outcome. Now you want to just start volume. It's all volume. <clears throat> Now it's about hitting the ground running and hitting that and, and leads, you know, your background just on, a, you know, brief look through. It's like, I believe you started just like selling door to door. S same idea. It's just, you just knock on more doors. Uh, that, that's just really, it just comes down to volume and you can do that, you know, the virtual door, right? You can find billions of people in a matter of days on, on Instagram without leaving your house. You can do this from Marrakesh, Bangkok, Vancouver, wherever. So it's really down to volume. So. You have two things. You either have time or money. If you have a bunch of money, you can run ads, bring people to you, get them to say, hey, I, I, I want this, this thing you're talking about. I want it. Or you don't have any money. You just have time. You knock on a bunch of doors. You slide in the DMs. You send a bunch of emails. You hit up people on LinkedIn. You identify who your audience is and you go to them and you start a conversation. And a lot of people are hesitant to do that because, of course, we just want people to be ready to buy with their wallets out and saying, hey, th this is great. But that's not how it works when you're first starting out and launching a business. You gotta you, you gotta get in front of a bunch of people. And I'm not talking ten people, I'm talking tens of thousands of people if you can. So it's really a volume game to, to me. So we've got a framework to just kind of help you get started on lowering that barrier of entry of who do I reach out to? What do I say? How do I get them to care? How do I start to run ads that bring people to me that isn't going to like burn a hole in my wallet? Um, so yeah, it's just about having as many conversations with your potential ideal audience as humanly possible. Fucking makes sense. Yep. Numbers game, any form, any business, you're a freelancer, you're an agency owner, you are a fucking in a corporate cubicle doing cold calling for a corporation that you don't talk about and you're trying to escape. Every business is about numbers. Okay, cool. And then obviously creating social media content is going to be part of this. Uh, obviously, you have the paid side, you have the content side. So um, yeah, I guess w what's next in the, in the framework? Yeah, so then it's really mastering the art of well, you know, I'm going to put the organic and paid together. We already kind of talked about that. Running ads, a lot of times it's not the complex ads that you think they are. Um, videos just cost a lot of money. And when you're first starting out, you don't have a lot of money. So we don't usually even focus our clients on running like video ads, you know, the typical video ads. Hey, are you a whatever trying to do this and trying to get that? Like it's going to cost you a lot of money. They work, okay, but they cost a lot. Text-based ads, photo ads work really well because people can read it in five seconds and understand what it is and okay. decide. And so there's wanna... cheaper cost per click on, or less competition cost per click on photo ads than video. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're the master at that, so you, you can speak to that too. But yeah, that's what we found is we do a lot of text-based ads um, and a lot of um, photo ads. Of course, there's boosting involved. There's a... a thing with videos that you could do to, to bring eyes to, to your page. And there's also some content strategy. We don't focus heavily on the content because a lot of our clients is like, hey, you need to figure that out. That's a part of your business. You need to just go and, and do what feels right. But there is an element of, of trust you need to build. We all know that know you like you trust you. 
if you're hitting up, t you can hit up 10,000 people on Instagram, but if you have a blank profile picture and no photos, they're going to be like, who the hell is this? I don't know. You, you're, you're not real. So there is an element of building trust and, you know, making talking head videos and creating content that speaks to their pain points that I talked about at the beginning. What's the dream outcome that they want? What are the things they're dealing with right now? They want to, you want it to make it so they read and view your page and be like, wow, they know me. They know me so well that that's my person. So then after that, it's mastering the art of sales or at least getting close to mastering, right? And a lot of creatives, that is a, that is a stigma. That is the, that's taboo. No, I can't ask for money. I'm taking something from someone. I feel gross. I feel slimy. So they end up just devaluing their art, their, their talents and charging $40. It's a little uncomfortable to start asking for $1,500 for, for a six week program. But being able to overcome those roadblocks is the next part of that framework is getting on calls with people and going through a script, we'll call it going through what they're dealing with, uncovering all of these things, diagnosing it like a doctor does and you know, prescribing your product or service as the solution. If you think of it like that, it makes it a little bit more comfortable. You're just connecting with people, you know, sales is just relationships. What we do is we teach these creatives to either be their own closers, of course, get to the point where they can maybe look to you and your company and like get a remote closer. But I like to teach them how to do it first. If they can't sell their own product or service first, why do they expect someone else to do it? So do that first, lay the groundwork, then hire out if, if it makes sense for you. But you need to, you need to understand the basics just in case as yeah. the local artist. Yeah, do it yourself. And then after it's chugging along and you have tons of leads, all right, that could be one of the potential things uh, to start to outsource as many other things to potentially start outsourcing in your business. And, you know, the closing calls is one of them, but everyone's different. It's going to be a different situation, especially if it's like a, in your program, I'm assuming in the program, they're working with you one-on-one -on -one and it's like, I'm sure you, that's probably one of your steps. Um, so, okay, cool. So mastering the uh, art of sales, we have ads. Um, all right, what's next? Yeah, then it's just kind of perfecting that process. This is usually the part where people get a little distracted. I told you at the beginning, you know, we're all just like, I want to try this. I want to try something new. It's not always something new. It's about consistently doing the things that work. It's going back to the basics and like in perfecting that process. In our program, I call them the four C's to success. Content, conversations, calls, and clients. This is the only four things you really need to be focused on. That's it. You need to create content that builds trust. You need to have more conversations with people you've never had before with your ideal clients. You need to get on more calls than you've ever done because that's how you're going to close. People aren't just going to stumble on your website and give you $2,000. They might eventually, but not right now. And you need to, you know, perfect that process of how you're working with your clients. You need to get them results. Otherwise, it's it's not a win-win. You need to make sure that you're, you're providing a good experience. So it's all going back to where are where are the holes in those four things that you're doing? Oh, you're not getting enough leads. Cool. More conversations. Oh, people don't trust you yet. Yeah, that's what they're saying on the calls. Cool. More content. So it's just going back to those four things and not adding anything else. So we like to get distracted and add more to our plate. And it, it usually hurts us more than helps us. So that's kind of the next thing. Yeah. Looking Focus back on at those. These. Yeah. No, don't get distracted with other stuff. Focus on these four things. The core four, yep. What's next? The, the final step here, this is usually when our clients start to get major wins and they're like, holy crap. <laughs> I'm making more money with three clients than I did with, you know, 10 plus. And it's not as much work as I thought it was. This is when you can, you know, they're hitting five, 10, $20,000 months and they're able to say, okay, I think it's time to tap in a team outside of us where we act as a coaching team to help you. Um, you know, build those skills yourself. This is where you can start to build out that team, hire a closer. Usually for our clients, it's the first, the first go-to is like hiring a messenger, a setter, if you will, somebody to kind of help have those conversations and lead them to a, a call. Dealt with some AI stuff. I don't really, I, I don't think it's there yet, 
I don't think it's there yet. Uh, it's still we need human we need human interactions that isn't just going to blur back something random. I think it's going to be it's getting close, but right now I, I like to hire out humans <laughs> for, for that specifically. Um, but that's when you start to just build out your team. Cool. Where are where are you lacking in the core four? Is it having enough conversations? Oh, I have so many clients I, I can't actually reach out to this thousands of people anymore. Great. Let's hire that out. Let's pay a setter that could be anywhere in the world like us and just having conversations um, and get them to act as you and go through your script and connect with them in the same way you do and book your calls for you so you can free up all that time and do other things. Work with clients, make more content, go on podcasts, whatever it is. So that's when we get into the team building, but until you're reaching at least at least 10k months it just doesn't make sense you need to do it yourself at least on our end like keep, keep, keep moving <laughs> okay nice so you're kind of bread and butter it sounds like in terms of the program is around 1500 and that's around a six week thing i'm curious after the six weeks what happens is there is there an upsell ascension is there what happens after that are you talking about for our specific program or what we're helping our, our clients build for them uh, what do you help the clients build yeah um it, it, it depends honestly with, with them it's it's sometimes an eight-week program sometimes a 10-week program um and yeah we, we definitely help them build like an ascension offer a back-end offer which is usually just a continuation right i'll give you an example we have a production client who he specializes in helping, it's super niche. He specializes in helping guitarists who want to start producing their own music in like a DAW. They don't know how, they, they have guitar riffs and they have guitar, or they like voice memos, but they don't know how to pr start producing, okay? So in his first eight week program, he helps them turn guitar voice memos into fully produced songs. And his continuation offer is great. Now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to start mixing and mastering them and start talking to you about how to start getting them into sync placements. So it's just that cool from idea to finish song. Now I'm making it sound pro and I'm going to start telling you how I got sync placements in like Netflix and HBO and stuff and give you my contacts and my framework. And that's a longer term continuation offer. So it's usually just like, what's the next step? What's their next dream outcome after that first one? That's usually what it is. Makes sense. By continuation offer, do you mean it's typically a monthly thing or is it again a high ticket for like 12 month or six month program or something? Yeah. Yeah. Usually, usually high ticket. Some clients prefer, I usually like to let them kind of lead whatever they make. They, they think makes the most sense for their clients. Some people do monthly. Um, others do just like another eight week, 10 week program. Um, for instance, our Ascension is 12 months because what we're speci specialized in and helping them do is like, we're helping you build a business. Like the first accelerated 12 week program is accelerated. I'm gonna help you build an offer, launch an offer, get clients, get your first 10K. And then after that, it's like, let's work together for a longer period of time because now we're adding in all the other bells and whistles in, in growth, building out your team, training your team, building SOPs, all that stuff. I need a little bit more time to help you do that. So we have a, a longer um, Ascension offer, 12, 12 weeks to 12 months. Um, but yeah, it really depends on our clients, what, what they prefer. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. So that's the... That's the general structure of the uh of the program the offer that you see works best um okay cool um what else is there to it or or what anything to cover next yeah in, in terms of our offer that's uh, that's the that's the bells and whistles you know um it's usually yeah creative entrepreneurs who just they have a skill or expertise like it it ranges from they are good at guitar and want to teach it to I have event hosts that are 20 year old kids from Florida who are just were really good at hosting and um, launching their own events for their artist career. And now they're showing other artists how to do that. Hey, artists, you want to you having a hard time getting paid for book on gigs. I'm just going to show you how to make your own gigs. You become the king of the castle. <laughs> so it just depends on their skills. Um, I've got another, I've got another client who, um, is a two time Grammy winner and she specializes in helping other singers who want to like get into like Broadway, um, find and nail their auditions. So coaches of all shapes and sizes and focuses, 
Um, but it's really the, the core for us is, is creative individuals who have this skill that are just like over here, like, ah, I got a thing, but I don't know. I don't know how to package it. Um, so, yeah, just as a recap, that's kind of the main the main focus for us is those artists. Pretty and so for for the initial, let's say, um, six to 12 week program uh, is is part of the offer coming up with the offer focusing on kind of one key initial milestone like yeah the very first thing we do is is help them build out that offer and help them package usually they come with like a couple ideas hey this is what i may be good at um and we go through uh, a strategy to help them uncover that using you know their greatest skill and expertise and passion and correlate it with a high ticket strategy so that's the first thing that we do um but yeah i mean and just you okay know, just uh, yeah let's just go into that what's so let's go into your your offer i'm, I'm down to dive into like what what exactly does your program do like as just like an example and you're, you're telling us about it and then kind of what's the next step yeah i went through pretty much all of the all of the key points already built um building that offer helping you create conversations and content um helping you on couple more calls all that stuff so it's 12 weeks and we will help you go from not having an offer to hitting your first 5k within that within that time frame and just to kind of just piggyback on that and and move to that next digital nomad you know travel lifestyle this is possible for even a guitar coach that wants to travel because i think covid showed us all that remote enter whatever you want is possible. You can do this remotely. You're just, you're coaching, you're, you're doing this through Zoom. I mean, we can do a lot of things from around the world. I mean, we're in two completely different places on the planet right now um, on totally different time zones and being able to, to have a conversation um, and get through struggles and things like that. Our clients are doing that too. They're traveling, they're coming out traveling with us. Um, they're working with their clients remotely in the Airbnbs. So I think this just this type of model works really well if you want to travel. Even if you have a family, you just want more time with your family. I think it's just like really accessible to be able to do this. And you're not tied to like a studio or tied to like um, a building that you have to go to every day. Um, so just to kind of move this into the digital nomad stuff, if that's something you're interested in, like you can do that even if you teach guitarists something so i think that's kind of a cool angle something to bring up like if that's something you're interested in high ticket anything closer setter coach it, it, it can be really conducive to, to digital nomad stuff for sure and then our next point is like a, it says a creatives digital nomad lifestyle so i don't know how you wanted to go about talking about that like what is your day-to-day -day look like what is the what does the daily life look like of a creator who is a nomad who is, you know, traveling or likes to live abroad? Yeah, I think the toughest part for me so far is this the, the constant time zone change because I'm moving around. It seems like you have a main home base, which is which is great. Um, I'm kind of at the beginning of my digital nomad um, life right now and just getting used to because I have mainly clients in the US, Canada, we have a few like in, 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 in Europe and, and whatnot, but we have to still work on like central standard time. So wherever I go, I have to keep that in mind. That's been the biggest struggle, but everything else has been pretty much the same. Like I'm just waking up, taking calls, making content wherever I am, um, getting acclimated with if the Wi-Fi is strong, if it's not, <laughs> things like that. And I know we dealt with that a little bit with trying to connect. Um, but lifestyle-wise, it just during the week. Um, so I'm traveling here with with my buddy Willie, who does digital marketing and sales for 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 my company. So we're like traveling, doing the same thing, which is really really cool to be able to like work remotely, but still kind of work side by side with someone in in front of another human being, which is really cool. We usually just lock in during the week. And then on the weekends, we completely disconnect from work and we go and actually like experience where we're at. Um, we're in Marrakesh, so cool, let's go into the desert. Let's ride a camel. Let's go eat some food. Let's go meet some locals. And then on during the week, we usually just kind of lock in um, to that time zone. So right now I'm working like a, typically work like a 3 to 11 p.m. shift because that's kind of closer to like um, U.S. time. So that's been a little bit of an adjustment, but nothing you know, extraordinarily difficult. It's just a little bit of a change. So lifestyle wise, it just 
allows me to see more of the world while also still working. I don't have to like feel like I have to have paid time off or non-paid time off. I'm just like, cool, I'm here. So I'm just gonna. I mean, when you're me. your own, when you're your own boss, that's that's the whole other part of what we're talking about. It's like there's kind of two different sides. There's like, all right, there's the location independent side of everything we're talking about. You can be, do do this from anywhere, but there's also, oh, you're your own boss. So it's the entrepreneurship, and then it's the travel. And that together is what I consider digital nomad. It's yeah. kind of it's both both sides, and they're both very special things. Like you can work for yourself, but you, maybe you have a physical location in your business. You have to be somewhere, uh, or you can be a digital nomad, or you can not work for yourself. And so it's really both of the things that we all want. And then the third thing I I say is making a, a lot of money. So it's something that and slash the potential to uh, be rich. The potential to we we all want to be rich as well. We all want to make you know lots and lots of money. Um, so having a, a having something that is um, potentially scalable to you know the the six figures a month you know level, and so yeah. that's the whole other part about getting into the space that we're really talking about is in the space of digital marketing uh, and the space of the, the social media economy. That's that's kind of what what we're in. It's uh, that's kind of a zoom out of the the bigger picture. Okay, a specific question I would have is: Do you do YouTube? Is that a focus for you? Not really. No, we definitely have a YouTube channel. Um, we've we pivoted niches the past like maybe five years and haven't really focused back on it. Um, it's a, it's a tough cookie to crack. I won't lie. I mean, cats off to you. It looks like you're doing a couple different channels. It's it's a, it's quite a commitment. Um, but no, I haven't. I haven't. It hasn't been a super big focus for us so, in a while. So Instagram is your focus, and do you do TikTok? Yeah. Some TikToks, yeah. Yeah, just started actually a fun TikTok channel uh, with me and Willie. Uh, it's called the Digital Bromads. <laughs> um, it's just kind of for fun. Okay. You know? okay, 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 okay. I'm the first one to use Digital Bromads on my YouTube channel, maybe 2017 or something like that. And then someone, uh, someone, it was just the title of a video. It was like the Digital Bromads in, in Amsterdam. It's me and my friends. And then uh, someone sends me this TikTok account, and his his name is Digital Bromad or something like that. And I go, passport oh, love. yeah, yeah. He's he's like a passport bro type of content where yeah, talks about that kind of stuff. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, this guy's like kind of funny. I've, uh, I don't know him, but I like followed him. As, that's the only only other person I've seen using Digital Bromads until you are the number three. Never third. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen that guy before. This is mainly like how to date to, in Thailand. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's a lot really talking about dating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's um, interesting. Just a fun fact. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't really do any uh, TikTok, but uh, I think a social media manager is like someone that something that I need for my you know digital mad content type. I was actually just uh, on Upwork hiring a social media manager just like right before this call. Um. But okay, that was leading me into the question of something I'm thinking about now is when I is if I'm traveling, where am I gonna film my videos, or where am I gonna have like a my desk, my studio where I can ha where I can have that space to churn out videos. Yeah. Now with me, I'm kind of doing more tutorial sty style stuff for the Amazon channel, and so I guess what's your workflow when you're doing? Instagram content. Are you just setting up your phone and going? Do you use like a nice camera and lighting or? Yeah, I've got this little lapel mic right here that was like ten dollars on Amazon. I've got a regular ring light. I've also got this fancy clip-on one, <laughs> and I use my phone. That's pretty much it. Um, so I do work with um, just uh, at the top of this year. I do work with a script writer who helps me which I have a lot of ideas, but it's really hard for me to like take those ideas into like a manageable script that makes sense. So he helps me kind of bring those in, in, into, into action. I put it into a teleprompter app and I walk around and I just film it. So it's been really cool like building that routine. And yeah, I just set up wherever, like right now I'm on the rooftop here in Marrakesh. Um, so I just kind of set up wherever I can. Sometimes it's my room, sometimes it's the bathroom. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't overthink the location. Um, and I think that's really the style of specifically Instagram and TikTok that it does the best right now. They want to feel like you're their friend and you're talking to them on FaceTime. They don't necessarily like the, the hyper edited edits that come in and swoop in. I think we're getting just desensitized because we see that so often. 
we immediately think this is a paid ad. Somebody's trying to sell me something. So I've been trying to do more just talking to the video. I might, you know, make it look weird, <laughs> like make it look like I'm just like FaceTiming a friend. And those tend to do the best. Um, so yeah, I just tend to not overthink it. Just wherever I'm at, I just walk around and, and film, yeah. film my script. <laughs> That's good. That's a tip I actually tell someone who is afraid to film on camera. I say, just pretend you're talking to a friend on a video call. Yep. And it's like, oh, actually someone told me that when I started vlogging like nine years ago. Oh, just, just pretend you're, you're not talking to a camera. Just pretend you're talking to one specific call, one specific friend uh, when you're looking into the camera. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. I like that. Just talking to your friend on Facebook. Do you have, uh, I'm sure you get into this in your program, like content systems, like creating a spreadsheet and then uh, creating shit in, in bulk. Like, do you like bang out 10 videos at once? Like, yeah, yeah, we definitely help them through just the basics. Um, we, as a part of our program, you, you get access to all of the coaches, um, myself, sales and marketing coach, you get like a fulfillment coach and I, I have a social media manager that we work with that helps them on like full group coaching calls to help them create a calendar and stay organized. Um, in the end, I try not to like direct that too much because it's like you have a basic framework, but if you if you give them too, if you, I've found that if I give my clients too much direction, they tend to overthink the content and do exactly what we were talking about. I need it to look perfect. I need it to be edited. I need me to look amazing. Like no, just schedule post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and just stay consistent with that. And post a quote on Monday, and post a video of you talking to your friend on Wednesday, and then uh, post some tutorial on Friday. Just do that over and over and over and over again. <laughs> it's like, don't overthink it. So yeah, they would definitely cover the basics, but I tend not to give them too much direction because then they hyper fixate on content when really in reality, what moves the needle is those conversations and those calls. Like if you're spending all of your time on content, you're not, you're not making calls and making sales and then you're not growing. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it's just like distraction happens. In terms of, uh, setting those creating those conversations in the dms which hopefully lead to calls are you teaching like engaging on other social media uh, groups and posts and stuff and then like you know like engaging around in other people's pages and groups maybe facebook groups and shit yeah and when when i like do that in in my calls people are like oh it, it, it's this easy <laughs> i'm like yeah it is you just go to your competitor's page and you go and look at, at some comments and for one there's some content ideas right there whatever their questions they're asking you should just go and make a video about that and you just reach out to them hey i saw you on whatever's page are you still struggling with this like you just do that a million times a day like that's it's really not rocket science but a lot of people just need frameworks to follow right um so we have like basic scripts that like ask you know engaging questions but in the end it's just about to be seen, you have to ha let others feel seen. That's really what it is. So you go and interact with their page. You, you, you give love to get love. That's what I say sometimes. So you want people to just come to your page and give comments. Then you go to their pages and you give comments. Because what's going to happen is, psychologically, they're going to log in and they're going to see 20 comments from you. They're going to see a follow from you. You're gonna, they're going to see you responded to one of their stories. And they're going to what? They're going to go to your page and check you out. And then they're going to see your content that you put out and be like, oh, this person gets me. Okay. That's as simple as that. So you do that 50 times in a day, you're going to create some people coming to your page, engaging with your stuff, and probably 20%, maybe even half of them are going to respond to you in the DMs. And now you have a conversation that can lead to a call. Again, it's just a numbers game, as we said before, yeah. which is false. Yeah, like how you said, 50, 50 times a day as a freelancer trying to get a client, maybe to be a closer for an influencer or something, like that's a number you'll hear, 50 DMs a day. Um, and that's that's DMs, maybe it's comments too. But I think the, the limit on Instagram is per day in terms of sending DMs out is 50, maybe it's 200, maybe it's 50, something like that. But I tell people, start with 50. 50 in one day. Let's just if you can do that in one day, come back to me after you've done that. And it takes a number of hours to do that. But like that's that's 
just the harsh reality is you can't just send five and be like, all right, I'm done for the day. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's like any form of freelancing, any form of online business, you really got to crank up the volume. And that means putting in the hours and grinding on it. And it's just no way around it. Like I said, time or money. If you don't want to put the time into it, you've got to put money into ads. And you can do that and bring people to you and have them message you. It's That's definitely a strategy that we use. But a lot of people don't have that money starting out. And that's fine. I didn't either start out. So I had to hit the ground running. I had to hit the pavement and send a bunch of emails. It wasn't DMs back then. <laughs> it, was just, it was just emails and maybe LinkedIn messages. Um, but... Yeah, it's like that's really the only two options you have. And sometimes if you have both, you can triple your output a lot of times. So you just got to choose one. I'm just curious. Does anyone, any of your uh, clients or you have success with these B2C offers on LinkedIn, maybe even LinkedIn DMing people or engaging on LinkedIn stuff, or is it mostly Instagram? I have... Um, attempted some things for me personally um and i think it's a i think it's a good option <clears throat> it's definitely like like everything else a little saturated i haven't found fantastic luck i know people who have and i know it does work you're dealing with a completely different type of person over there you're dealing with the professional so i think like depending on your offer if you're like a, a closer or a setter or you're some other kind of like copywriter or something i think that would work perfect over there um but I haven't seen too much luck personally. I also haven't put in the volume over there like, like we're talking about, so I couldn't speak to it directly. Um, but I know it's a good place for professionals, but as a professional on LinkedIn, I get a shitload of those in mails that just are not direct. It's just like obviously a copy paste. So it kind of desensitizes me from like, yeah, up on, from on the other end of things. So uh, I'm not sure. I should do a video on the horrible LinkedIn cold DMs I get. It's like you're doing the DM camp cold DM campaign. Shouldn't you like study up on what's a good cold DM and what's a shitty one? Yeah. As business owners, you get contacted a, a lot. But yeah, that's that's part of the game. But hey, if you just have a little bit of personalization to it and a little bit of strategy to it, then yeah, you can you can cut through it. But cool. I was just curious about uh, about LinkedIn if you happen. But it seems like most of the action of is happening on Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Instagram, maybe even some Facebook. Facebook groups are a, uh, a thing that's looked over a lot. I mean, if you want to talk about a pool, a niche pool of people, Facebook groups are a great place, especially if you teach piano for to 40 year olds. There's a Facebook group for people who want to learn piano and are 40 and above, like it just exists. So I think that's an untapped market too nowadays. But yeah, it's mainly Instagram meta stuff. I think that's a really potential, at least for our clients, right? My example was if you're a piano teacher that wants to teach piano to 40 year olds and above, there's a group there. There's probably several groups there that specific. So if you really want to like laser focus and take a sniper approach instead of a shotgun approach, um, Facebook groups are, are potentials. You know, there's definitely some like spammy weird stuff on there, but... I've had clients reach their first 5K and never spend any on ads, and it's all been through Facebook group interactions. What's the quick, quick crash course on Facebook posts strategy? Is it comment on other posts? Is it make posts? What is it? Yeah, it's um, a mixture of those, but I would say first is the, people's go-to is to go in there and be like, hi, I'm a, this is who I am, and I'm helping people with this. Like, where are you? Like, that does not, isn't going to work. They're going to sniff that out. <clears throat> you go and pose a question. Again, think about what 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 is your ideal client struggling with? Hey, hey, guitarists, I'm I'm curious. What's your biggest struggle when trying to master soloing on uh, the electric guitar? People love to talk about their struggles, and they will flood those with comments. And it's literally comments of people who you can help. That's your leads right there. So go into groups. I don't. This is, for the lack of a better term infiltrate these Facebook groups and provide value first. Don't just go in there and sell you. You're going to get booted from there. Go in there and pose a question, get people to comment and say, yeah, that's me. I struggle with this. I don't know how to, you know, I don't know where to place my fingers. My fingers get tired, whatever their pain point is. 
and then go in there and create a conversation in the comments and move it to the DMs. It's a very, really easy strategy that you can just start. Yeah, so specific, specific questions uh, where they can kind of vent and on their problems and struggles and then take it from there. Yeah, or just post it, posting a lead magnet, right? Lead magnet being, for those of you who don't know, hopefully you do know, um, you're providing a piece of value in exchange for something, a follow, a, a, an email, their phone number for text messages. You can say, hey, I put together a 15-minute video that shows you how to blank so you can finally blank without doing blank. People love free stuff. They're going to be like, yeah, that's exactly what I struggle with. Um, hit the comments, then DM them, send them the free thing, and create a conversation. You don't even have to exchange it for the email if you don't. The, I've had lead magnets just just – Literally, the magnet being you're starting a conversation with them. Oh, you're struggling with this? Tell me more about that. How can I help you? How else can I give you some resources? It's really all it is. It's just you want to open the door and get them to have right. a conversation. So, yeah, so if, you ask for, if you ask for them to comment below, then you can just DM them to it. Like, I don't need your email. Yeah, it's kind of like the magnet yeah. is the, the, the thing. The one thing they have to do is comment. And that's a. I was actually going to ask about that strategy, the two-step strategy, people call it, or comment below the strategy, whatever, and that boosts your posts up on any platform. You want to think about, like, what's the lowest barrier for them to do? Like, you know, back in the day, it was just like, click on the link in my bio. I know that seems like not that big of a deal. People don't want to do that. That's a lot of work. <laughs> it sounds crazy. The lowest barrier of entry is, like, they can press a button and type the word go. <laughs> it's really easy. They don't need to go to another website. They don't need to go click three links. They just comment and then you reach out to them. So that's the lowest barrier. It's like you want to make it as easy as possible for people to do things. So the two-step approach I think works because it's just like comment, you know, yeah, comment, start, comment, go, and then you reach out to them and they're like, yeah, cool. I, I just had to say one word and they came out, they came to me and gave me free stuff. So I, I really like the two-step approach. You want that, like the lead magnet, the thing you're giving away to just be so good that you feel like you're giving away all your secrets. That's how good it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm making, in the process of, uh, well, my digital marketing guy, uh, Sam is making some lead magnets. Um, is turning my videos into into documents. I've actually kind of never thought of just like using a video as a comment to get this thing. What what is your experience like? If it's a video you post in a group, uh, like comment below, um, and I'll send it to you. Like, is that can that same video be on Instagram, or do you want to make some make it something like exclusive? You can do it, but I like to try to make it exclusive. I mean, it could just be like a Loom video of you like sharing this document, like. Hey, I've I've taken like for instance, you know, it's like I've taken 500 sales calls in the past three months, and this is the script that works the best. Who wants it? And then it's just like a Loom video of you going through the script, and then also it's attached like the Google Doc. So it's like again, it's like that's heavy value for somebody for completely free. You got a script, you got a Loom video from the person like explaining it, and with some data. Hey, I did all this work, so you don't have to. Like kind of like those videos of like, hey, I read a hundred books, so you don't have to. Here's the synopsis of all of them, because um, people don't like to do stuff. <laughs> so if you can make it easier for them, um, they'll trust you and they'll have a conversation and they'll probably become a client. So yeah, to go back to your question, I'd try to make it exclusive, because um, otherwise they could just go to your 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 Instagram and, and watch it. But I'm sure if that's a really old video, it wouldn't really matter. You could just do both. What other kind of pieces to the puzzle or things to, do you want to dive into? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, we got the whole puzzle here, I think. I think the big thing is for people starting like at the very beginning, it's just like figuring out what to focus on. You know, we talked a lot. We talked about all the higher end stuff, like two steps. People might be listening to this and don't even know what they want to sell. And they're like, I don't even know what the hell y'all you guys are talking about. So it's like, Figuring out what you should really focus on is usually what I see people struggle with the most. Like, I'm good at sales. I'm also like really kind of like marketing. And uh, I think I could be a good teacher or a coach. So that's a, a question that you kind of have to look at internally and figure out yourself. Um, I think a coach and a mentor can help you uncover that. But like I said before, it's really at the intersection of what you're already doing and really like doing and what you can add a, high, a potentially high ticket price to, which is pretty much everything. So um, don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like 
you're probably already doing something right now that people come to you and they're like, hey, like, I, I you know, I know you're good at blank. Like, I, I need your advice on something here. Can you do this for me? Like, you're, you're already probably getting asked to do these things and you're just overlooking it and you're trying to, like, learn new skills when you should just be, like, doubling down on that. Like, if people keep asking you to teach them music theory, like, do that. If you're already traveling, for instance, and you're a digital nomad and people are like, hey, how do you do this? Like, how, how does this happen? There's probably an offer there already right there. Like, package that. Do, be somebody's personal digital nomadic travel agent. Charge $3,000 and help them set it up and be their coach, for instance. So whatever you're currently doing is probably where your offer is. Nice. So in your program, you help people go through that process and obviously first step what am i going to teach what's going to be my offer yeah yeah and of course it's not always teaching right we also have you know if you you know done for you freelance stuff like if you're a good copywriter you don't want to teach copywriting and you just want to do it you want to be a script writer for creative entrepreneurs for instance same thing right do it together done for you there's still high ticket done for you. You just wouldn't want to charge a lot more because you're doing the work, right? A video editor, a copywriter, social media manager that might be doing comments and stuff. So not always just teaching, but yes, you are, you are completely right. We help them figure out what that is. Is it a group teaching model or are you actually going to go and do the work for them? Price it accordingly, figure out what, what the offer is and kind of do all these other steps that we talked about. Yeah. Gotcha. Cause it's like for, for my audience who are aspiring uh, remote closers and setters, all this stuff applies, posting in groups, creating a little Instagram page about being setter, being a setter, and just going out there and getting clients. And so, yeah, this it, it applies to being a freelancer as well. Um, oh, for yeah, sure. Offering, yeah, we have yeah. a lot of clients who like do stuff for people, like custom songwriters, where it's like their niche is weddings. Their target audience is newlyweds or they're about, they just got engaged or they're having an anniversary and they want a custom song written about their love story. They're not going to teach them how to write songs. Like that's just too much. They're going to just do it. So, you know, they make 10,000 a month plus writing songs for couples weddings and coming to their wedding and like performing it for instance. But yeah, definitely could work for what you're talking about here. Yeah. All the, that was what I would consider a freelancer. You're, you're doing yeah. work for them on their behalf um, in exchange for, you know, much more money than the, the, the do it together approach. Yeah, makes sense. I'm curious because it a pretty common thing in the, uh, you know, influencer space is you have a, a done with you offer, you have a done for you offer, and then you have a do it yourself offer, which is just a course. Do any of your students have that or is that part of the one of the weapons that you teach or do you pretty much just focus on the, the done with you uh, thing that we talked about? Yeah, I don't focus heavily on the do it yourself. A lot of people when starting out, I think that the, the course space, if I can speak transparently, like the course space is just really saturated and people don't do shit. People need accountability or they just need it done for them. Yes, there's people that's like, hey, I'm getting so much, I'm getting so much work and my one-on-one -on -one program is working so well. I have enough social proof that I can go and take this and downsell people. There's definitely people who that, that makes sense for. But for the mass majority, it's like, you don't have enough data to even know if your course works well enough that if you take yourself out of it, people will still get the same results. You know what I mean? And so it's like, that needs to be really, really perfected to the point where if there was no coach, could somebody watch your videos and get the exact same results? Because if they really can't, they're not going to do it. They're not going to get results. And, you know, it just do it doesn't help anybody other than you to make, you know, what, $7 per course or whatever you're selling it for. <clears throat> so, yes, there are some people who that makes sense for. Like, for instance, we do, we do not have currently a uh, um, do-it-yourself because the things that we're doing is like so high level that people would get lost in there <laughs> doing all of those seven points um, of our framework. So I think it'll come eventually, but people just, pe most people are lazy and they need, they need that personal trainer, right? I always, I always do the um, analogy of the, the gym versus the personal trainer. I can pay 
Planet Fitness twenty dollars a month and maybe go to the gym. But I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna lose so much more weight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build so much more muscle if I pay a personal trainer a thousand dollars. Because why? Because they're gonna yell at me and tell me what to do and hold me accountable. I'll just sleep in and not go to Planet Fitness for twenty bucks. That's what'll happen. That's what has happened. Yep. So yeah, use that holds you me. accountable. The accountability is yeah a big thing. A check in. Yeah, kind of having that mentor for sure. Do you um, do you talk about in the program of like the long term big vision of building your personal brand and like what does this lead to in five years, in ten years, in in twenty years, and kind of like the whole the like the career path of a creator of like long term. Yeah, that's usually we start to get into that in our in our ascension offer as as you called it. Um, because we have 12 months. The 12 weeks goes by real fast. It's just like, I just want you to launch it. I want you to see the proof of concept and we can go from there. But the 12 month is when we really can dial in and say, cool, long term, like let's start to build out a team. Let's start to focus on your personal brand. Let's start to focus, refocus on content and less about conversations because now you can pay meta to bring you conversations now you can put your time over here so yeah um that usually happens in in our, in our back end nice yeah i uh, i like to tell people that like this economy we're living in is a personal brand economy like it used to be like maybe a brand economy but people in this social media economy slash personal brand economy building wealth is actually building your name and your your fans and anything that you do or if you if you build like a thousand loyal fans or something it's like you you have a steady business um and so like big picture that's what i like to tell people what it's all about nice okay so you have the initial 12 week program and then after that the 12 month program what is your um weekly workflow look like are you doing like multiple weekly calls like in a group setting for the 12 month program and then you also have the people on the 12 month and 12 week like are you doing like calls every day or i'm curious how many calls you do every week because that's something in my mind like i don't want to be doing a fucking bunch of calls all the time yeah so we have built out a hybrid model so it's a mixture of the do it yourself because there's modules there's there's things to help you with those key pieces in the framework we talked about um that we found ourselves saying the same things in one-on-one -on -one calls like for instance, okay, you get to the ad section. We don't need to tell you each individual person how to set up their ads manager or set up the pixel. We just created a video and they can go and watch it and get it done themselves. Um, and we also, we basically have, we say calls as needed. So usually about one call a week with their personal coach. And then we also have group setting too, which all with all of the team, I have like on Wednesdays, I have a, a lead generation clinic that we call them. And people come in and they're like, I'm having, I'm struggling with messages. Like they are booking calls. They don't trust me. So I review messages and I kind of go through like what steps I think they should take. So it's a mixture of <clears throat> course slash modules to learn the basics. So we don't have to repeat ourselves a million times. One, on, uh, they get a one-on-one -on -one personal coach that they have one-on-one -on -one calls to help them over mindset shifts, help, help them over, you know, personalized roadblocks that they're experiencing. And then group coaching that we can, have it as a group setting, which I think helps because people like to be with other like-minded people. They're in a Zoom meeting with other art artistpreneurs that are doing a similar thing and they feel empowered. So it's a mixture of all those things. So no, I'm not on daily calls. Um, oh yeah, that's good. So you have one, ske one scheduled group call, one per week. It's probably at the same time, but every week it rotates the specific topic. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we have clinics every day. Clinics. Of the week. Oh, so there's a clinic every day of the week but you have multiple coaches on your team or like how many coaches do you have on your team? Yeah. So we've got four different coaches that present um, clinics, you call them office hours. Basically, you know, there's not a presentation. It's just like, cool. I'm here to talk about sales. Maybe they'll review a sales call. Willie will review a sales call from a client be like, okay, let's, let's halt here. This is where you should have like isolated an objection. This is where you should have probably doubled down. This is where you should preframe and then like explain it. And then people see it in real time as opposed to just watching a video like that's pre-recorded. It's just a little bit more powerful. Uh, but yeah, about four coaches, sales clinic, marketing slash ads clinic, uh, lead generation messaging. There's a content clinic. 
Um, there's a pitch practice. Getting people to just practice pitching their pillars and pitching their thing, we found is really powerful, especially for somebody who's never sold anything high ticket like that before. People are real, real bad at pitching stuff. So it's like they really need practice. Um, <clears throat> so we put two people, uh, we pit two, two clients against each other and we, they, we have them pitch each other on their program and we kind of halt them and they're like, hey, this is what you should have done here. So we found really good luck there. Um, and we also just have like open office hours for, for, for some people throughout the week too. Okay. That's, that's, that's cool. So every, every Monday through Friday, there is some sort of thing they can come into every day. Okay, cool. But you're, you're only doing one of them a week and then right. maybe you're doing some one-on-one -on -one calls with students as needed. So they will like request it on your calendar or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we also have a, a community on Slack. I'm sure you're familiar with Slack. Um, yeah. So Pretty much, I don't want to say 24-7, but close to 24-7, uh, you know, access to all yeah. of us. Slack, they got their private channel, so they're they're okay. well supported in the program. So if they're struggling with something, they can ping us on Slack, they can come to a group call, they can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one, like okay, world. I was going to ask if you do it in Slack or school or what, so it's all in Slack? I like Slack, yeah. I use yeah. school. Way back in the day, I'm, I, I've heard it's it's improved quite a bit, but I, I'm just yeah. I kind of like Slack. We were kind of integrated. Yeah, I use Circle for my thing now. It's it's like Slack, but it's got courses built in, so it's mm. like, but it, it's a it's it's like Slack in that it's a chat. It's chats rooms where school is just posts. Yeah. So I, I was just looking into Slack. I'm thinking about switching to Slack though. So you just on the free plan? Yeah. Just on okay. The free plan. That was my because okay. the not free plan is just like ridiculous because we have so many. Yeah, you have to charge seven dollars per member. member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really need all of those. Um, okay, features. That's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, I've heard other masterminds do Slack and. Okay, so you kind of teach that as your kind of framework for your program. Okay, as your stack. All right, you got Slack, and you have the you know the check-in calls or whatever, and then yeah, we have the same thing going. Each student has a one-on-one -on -one chat. Um, so you can, you know, ask the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, get the one-on-one -on -one engagement, uh, and then the group calls. Yeah, it's a good, good uh, way to learn in this um, online education industry. You know, that's kind of also a piece of what we're talking about: the online education kind of movements. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I, I, I found really good luck in like the, the, we'll call it the hybrid model, right? A little bit of everything, a little bit of the courses, a little bit of one-on-one -on -one attention because people need that accountability. If you push them into a mastermind and you never give them that one-on-one, -on -one, they're not going to see the best results. It's just not going to happen. So it's like you need a little bit of all of those. And they also need the community. They need they need to feel like they're a part of something bigger than just their one their own business. So uh, I, I found that a mixture of all of those is really powerful. Nice. I feel it. Well, this is uh, this is fire. Any other any other like tips that we left out that, that people should know? I don't think so. I mean, I'll just kind of go back to the to, to the motto that we have over here just to kind of end this out, which is do less better. That's that DLB offer model, but it's really just take that mantra into your life, like do less things and do them better. So stop doing all, all the stuff, stop getting distracted. It's usually what I see with clients coming in. They're like, I'm doing this and this, this and this and that. And they're like, I mean, I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, well, no wonder. Focus on a couple things and make that. I mean, I built this one business for over ten years. Like, I'm trying to just hyper focus into this one thing. So, once you're getting up to like what you said, six figures a month, okay, now you can you can branch out and it'll start to do something else. But until you get there, like, stop spreading yourself so thin. So it's just leave you with that message. Hundred percent. You're speaking to me right here. I've uh, as a creative type, I'm perfect example. I have two YouTube channels going on. I have this this podcast. So much going on. Just the travel content, the sales content, the Amazon content, um, the Instagram pages. And um, I've always known like, oh man, if I only focused on like an Amazon agency, like I'm, I know I'd be, you know, farther and higher with that. If I only focus mm -hmm. on, it's like as part of the creative brain, it's almost like I don't care if, if if both my businesses are medium, like I want to do both things. I'm going to be happier that way. Like I love switching my brain. It's like part of my day. All right, I'm totally focused on Amazon. Then I can unplug from that, and then I'm over here, and I'm focusing on, uh, you know, helping people make money online uh, with 
with talking about sales and freelancing. So I, I like how you said focus on a couple of things, <laughs> not focus on one thing. Because like, like me, I already, for example, like as a someone who already has two companies going, but it's like focusing on those core things in each business while minimizing all the other stuff. And so that's uh, definitely it's a reminder to myself there. Yeah, and I mean, like you're a different example too because you've talked about multiple times you're like hiring people out <clears throat> on Upwork and stuff. So you're not doing all of this stuff. You are making enough money in some places <clears throat> where you can hire this particular thing out and continue to do the other stuff that you lo love. Like you're like stair stepping. So that totally makes sense. What I'm mo mainly speaking to is people who <clears throat> don't have any of that revenue and they're trying to build five different businesses, hoping something sticks and trying to do all of the work. It's like you're only, your burnout rate is going to be so high, but you're kind of doing it in a different way. It's like, yeah. You're focusing on a couple things. That's okay, though. I kind of focus on a couple things too. But yeah, I think you're doing it right. You're just doing yeah. it, hiring yeah. out the things you don't yeah. really want to. Makes sense. As my side hustle, as my passion business, because my whole, you know, meaningful business and purpose-driven business is help other you know, versions of myself uh, be here in Bangkok. Like I can, you know, be able to work from wherever, and obviously a part of your core messaging as well. Is you know, this is the first generation in history that we can actually do this work from laptops. And if you love travel, then what are you waiting for? Like, there's plenty of things you can do. And so, yeah, you know, love to hear um, you helping people turn whatever into an online business. And it's more than possible than ever. You guys heard it. That's the whole framework right there of how you pick something that you're going to teach or offer and go out there even with no money engage on instagram and facebook groups just that alone and making some phone videos making some comments people are going to come to your page and see what you do so you help with a specific thing and boom if you focus on the high ticket model then you only need to get a couple a few clients a month rather than getting a bunch of 100 200 300 400 dollar courses that's really where the the juice is is combining all the things that you that you said and i mean that's the dream job what is the what is the definition of work right it's doing something that you'd rather not be doing so if you can actually talk about what you love talking about and make money then that is not work that's retirement right there you know yeah. And so that's really when you come into uh, you know the four-hour work week. To borrow it from the book, it's it's a figure of speech. But what it really means is most of your time is focused on doing what you like to do and making money from you know basically you're spending most the majority of your time um, doing what you like to do. And of course, if you have a online business like this, there's plenty of free time comes with it where you can focus your other time on travel. Go ride some camels. Go experience cultures. Go do all the other bucket list things that we all have. Go as creatives. We all probably have lots of other creative projects that we want to do as well. Like for me, I want to get back into making music. I want to make a documentary. And so, getting the money to have that, and then having a an online business that generates cash. Obviously, once you have a team, while you sleep, to fund our other you know creative endeavors. So that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Love that. Thanks for working with me. I know it was a, it, it was a struggle there for me for a second in Mexico, but I'm glad we got this to work out. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, that, was a, that was a few months few months of back and forth, and we made it happen, but I think this was a banger. This was yeah. fire. I will, uh, I'll tag you on Instagram uh, when I share it, and uh, yeah, we can be in touch on our Instagram. Absolutely, dude. So you're, you're mainly based out of Bangkok then. If I make my way out there, I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know if uh, anyone's coming through Bangkok. Let me know. Um, I got a condo out here. This is this is home base, just in grind mode, um, building those two uh, companies that I talked about. Cool, dude. Good yeah, yeah. We'll be in touch, man. Appreciate your time. All right.